Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to UV map in AL Bacon Mesh so that you can actually see textures in Rigs of Rods and BMNG. What I'm going to be UV mapping is the body of my Ferrari. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to split. You right click up here, split area, click. And you go down to this bottom tab right here and you're going to click UV image editor. And this is where we're going to be wrapping our body onto this. If you want to go to image, new image, you either do 1024 or 20. It really doesn't matter as long as it's the size that you want. Hit OK. So now we're going to hide everything we're not going to use. That. Yeah, let's just do this way. Okay. So basically when you, oh crap, one thing you gotta remember is when you go to select your mesh, just select all the verts, and then just hit new image, there we go. UV mapping is kind of like if you're building a paper car, how it's all flat onto one piece, it's got all the pictures on it, that's basically what UV mapping is. So what you want to do is map it to where you'll most see it in game. Like, if you're gonna look at the side, you'd want to look at this view rather than up here where you're not really gonna see it. So, let's go on here. Let's do face mode. I'm gonna use a B and we're just gonna drag all the way across the side. I'm gonna stop it right about there. So now, after we got the side, you can see we got some of the top stuff that we don't want. So we're just going to take some of that off, right there. And this is one of those things where you just got to use your best judgment on what to map for each side. See right here, I might not be able to see the faces right here, so I'm not going to select them. From the side right here, everything looks nice, but make sure you go all the way around your views and make sure that a face will look the best it can from where you map it. So for example, right here, the back would get a better image from you being mapping it from the back end rather than the side. Because right here it's about half the size of what it is right here. So just going to take some of this off. And I guess I could do a little bit more right there. It's just kind of a slap job. I'm not really worried about what it looks like. Now that you got your view all mapped out, you're going to want to hit U and you're going to hit project from view. So it's going to map it to the way you see it in Blender. So now we come over here and here is the side of our car. So we're going to want to drag this right there. And after you map something, you want to hide it with H. So that way you don't map it twice and it'll come out really screwed up. One thing you got to remember is you want to keep it consistent. You want to have all the faces in line right here rather than something like that. Alright, that's just another slap job, but it'll do for now. Oh, one thing you gotta remember is watch out for the way you map one side so you can do it the same for the other side. See right here I stopped at the second loop from over here. So I'm gonna stop same spot over here. So now we got the top view, we're gonna hit U, project from view, now we have the top of our car. You see that the spot that we hit is no longer on the image. So if you accidentally drag right here and you go to unhide it, so you kind of have a problem. So what I always do is, I always put it just off to the side where I know nothing else is at. So I'm going to hide that, and then you just do the same thing for each view. And now I don't feel like doing the rest of my views. So let's just say you get down to weird spots, like yours won't necessarily be as big as the rear end of a car, but like a little spot maybe down here at you. And you're going to want to do a smart UV project. I'll basically unwrap all the faces like this so you don't even have to mess with them. I'm going to scale that. And we're going to drag it over here. So now that you've got everything hidden, you want to hit Alt-H. And now we have our car UV mapped. So, one thing you got to make sure you do is keep the car scaled through each view. So it's not all distorted once you get it in-game. So I'm going to rotate this and scale it to the side of my car. 
Now how you place it on this image is however you want to do it. It's easier to do something like from the top view, you might want to have it right there. So when you're skinning it or painting a texture on it, you can put like a number right on top rather than having to rotate it. And the sides you want to keep side to side. But I don't know if I'll actually be able to fit this on here. No, I will not. So just for the video, I'll do it to side. So now we've got all our verts onto the image. So this entire thing is UV matte. So what we want to do next is get ready to bake it. So when you're baking it, you have all these little cameras right here. This is what's set to bake. And if you have all of these selected, and I go to on hide everything, when I go to bake this, it'll bake the shadow from all of my parts onto the body, which is kind of not necessary for what we're doing. Once you get in game and people are modding it and they're taking parts off of it, you don't want to shadow some part that's not actually on it anymore. So we're going to deselect all of these. Now we're ready to bake it. So we're going to go to your settings. And let's just turn this up to 0 0.65, 0 0.35. Samples, you want to do about a three sample for a test. Under here, under gather, fall off one. So this is just going to be a test UV map. So we're going to hit, go down here to bake, full render to ambient occlusion, normalize so that it doesn't bake the color under here. Uncheck clear and bake. So we can see that we have a bit of an issue right here where it's all triangleized, triangulated. So that means that some faces are intersecting. So we're going to want to move these faces. Okay, so this triangle is my problem. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And let's go back to image. I'm going to reload my image and bake it again. And now we can see it looks pretty nice. Usually whenever you bake something, you might have like a dark spot on it. Or maybe you have the entire car body, but one of the squares might be dark. That's because a face might be flipped around. You need to hit recalculate the faces, or you can hit control N, which resets the normals. So now that we've got our body, it looks pretty clean. I don't have a lot of parts on here, so I don't have to worry about filling in the spaces. Usually you'd want this to be pretty tight up against the body. Well, we're going to reload the image since it's the final bake. We're going to turn the samples up to 32. Now this will make your computer lag a bit. Now we're going to hit bake. Wait for that to render. Now you can see that this image isn't all rough looking and distorted like the previous one that we did because we have 32 passes which means that the lighting goes over it 32 times. See right here I have a spot right here and where did I see? I have a triangle right here. So it looks like I have an intersecting face right here but I don't really care since it's just a video. Another way you can check it is go here textured mode and you can kind of see right here you can tell it's pretty lined and ugly so that's one of those things you need to control in and make sure it's all non-reverse faces. Another reason why I have this is because my faces are overlapping on my images. If you look at the body of the Volkswagen thing, I really took my time. I made sure that all my parts were fit together. When you UV map something, your parts are already split apart. So what you would do is this is all its own part. It's not connected to the hood. You see right here on this image, all my parts are added right here. Nothing's intersecting each other. So what we do is something simple like a three pass bake. One thing I want to make sure is if it says no image or objects found, make sure you have that clicked on there. Go to bake. See now I have a rough spot. I know where everything's at. So I would save this image. Save as image that. 
and then I would go to my next part, which would be the hood, and I'd UV up, map out my hood, and before I baked it, I would open up the same image I had my body on, I would make sure that nothing intersects, and then I'd place it about the scale with this, then I would bake this, and now everything fits, nothing's intersecting, your meshes are still split apart, and you do that for all of your parts, make sure they all fit on the same image, and then you'd go back and do a 32 pass. I'm going to hit image, save as image, and call this tr underscore body. Alright, now we're going to save this, I'll save it to my desktop, you can minimize that. Now that you have your image, right click, open paint.net or you can use Photoshop. So now we got it in here. Double click on this, you're gonna hit multiply. What that does is, if you add, I'm gonna add a new layer, plus a texture, AO. And what the multiply does is, if you have a color underneath texture, such as me painting a red, then it makes it go through the white. Now you can see that we have some shadows on the body line so that's not super bright like you see out of SketchUp. So now that we have a texture, I'm going to add a little bit more stuff. Now we have our image all painted. What I'm going to do is File, Save As, and this will be your texturing image. That'll be a PDN or if you use Photoshop PSD. Save that to my desktop. That's how you can go back later and texture it and still keep your AO bake on it. So I'm going to file, save as a PNG. Oh, I got to do it like that. There. Now we have UV mapped body with numbers on it. Woo! Yep, it's pretty beautiful. See, so it's right here. I have some splotch marks. That's just because I kind of side job UV mapped it, probably from the wrong kind of view or abnormal issue. Should be a control N or fixing the faces. Um, down here you can see it's a little dark, a lamp or something. And just kind of drag it down. See, now that I dragged it down, I can tell I got some splotch areas right here. And you can tell they're all within a face. So this face probably needs reverse, or not reverse, recalculated. And then you have to rebake the image again to get rid of those splotchy spots. And then just take the image and put it back on top in your PDN file. You can keep your texture. And you see right here, even when I drag light underneath, it's a bit darker than what the top is. That's the whole point of AO baking something, because it calculates where light will hit it and it reflects and bounces it off in game so it doesn't look extremely bright it looks realistic that is how you get uv map and ao bake on a mesh and then if you want to put it in game you just have to like right here i would have all these deleted in order to get it seen at rigs or rods you would add a material and i'd call it tr body so when you export it, when you export this mesh, it'll look into a file and say, this is the image that goes on top of the body. So that's where you put the managed materials in the truck file to see this image. So if you accidentally call it TR body with two Ys, it's not going to find your image. You have to make sure that's perfect. And then you put in your managed materials, and you drop the image and the mesh into the game. And it should appear. It's really not as hard as it sounds. It's just time consuming. You're getting all these little splotches right. It's one of those things where the amount of time you put into it is the amount of reward you get out of it. You want to do a slap job like I did. It's going to come out like a slap job. But if you really take your time and make it look nice, it'll come out beautiful.